Welcome to our large ratio and proportion series. There's a lot to get through, so to ensure you become a master at these topics, we've broken down all the aspects of proportion and ratio. This is going to be a 17 part series and the aim is to cover all you need to know. Some parts will be easy and other parts may be challenging, but we've got this. You will master this. We will start with proportion. Proportion, in my opinion, is better described visually, so here's a rectangle with dimensions 12 centimeters and four centimeters. Let's say I want to make the exact same shape, but twice as big, like you're expanding an image on your phone or tablet. What would the new dimensions be? If the shape is twice as big, that means the dimensions are also twice as big. Therefore, the larger shape's dimensions are 24 centimeters and eight centimeters. What would be the dimensions of a shape half the size of the original? The length 12 centimeters and 4 centimeters will be halved, giving us a new length of 6 and 2 centimeters. These three shapes' dimensions have the same proportion because the relationship between each height and the length are the same. Each length is three times larger than the height. Therefore, they have the same proportion. With this knowledge, I could create a similar rectangle using this fact. For example, like these. Once again, the dimensions have the same proportion because the relationship between each height and the length are the same. Let's use another example to see other ways to use proportion. Three shirts cost £2.40. How much would six shirts cost? How much would one shirt cost? How much would two shirts cost? Or even 13 shirts, how much would they cost? We are told the relationship between two things, shirts and the cost. Similar to what we saw with the rectangles example, where we are told the relationship between the height and the length. Six shirts are double the amount of three shirts. So what would happen to the price? Well, the price would also double. Six shirts cost £4.80. How would we find the cost of one shirt? Once again, quite straightforward, if three shirts cost £2.40, then to find the cost of one, we would need to break the £2.40 into three equal parts. Dividing £2.40 by three gives the price of each shirt, which is 80 pence. We have successfully found the price of a single unit of clothing. When calculating the worth of one of something, or a unit, you may hear this method be referred to as the unitary method, as we are finding the amount of a unit. Using this method, we can find the answer to the last questions easily, because we now know that each shirt costs 80 pence. Two shirts would therefore cost 80 pence times by two, which equals to £1.60. And 13 shirts would cost 80 pence times by 13, which equals to £10.40. Using this method and bars, have a go at these questions. There are a few topics you'll use this technique with and you'll see some similarities when we go into ratios. The first type of question you may see this with is with recipe ingredient type questions. For example, to make 10 chocolate chip cookies, you would need the following ingredients. How much of each ingredient would you need if you wanted to make four cookies or even 27 cookies? We proceed like before and find the amount of each ingredient if we were to make only one cookie. If 10 cookies requires 125 grams of butter, then one cookie would require 10 times less. We would have to divide each quantity by 10, giving us the following values. We now know the amounts of a unit, so the rest of the equation should be straightforward. For four cookies, we multiply each amount by four, giving us these values. This is how much we need for each ingredient to make four cookies. For 27, we multiply the unit values by 27. Here are the amounts for 27 cookies. Pause the video and have a go at these questions. A 
Another type of question is the comparison of proportion to find the best buy. For example, in shop A, an apple costs 34 pence. In shop B, the same apple costs 39 pence. Which shop has a better value for money? It would be shop A, as one apple is cheaper. What if both shops had a deal where three apples in shop A costs 99 pence, and in shop B, five apples costs £1.60? Which shop has the better value for money? Essentially, what's being asked is which has a higher proportion of fruit? Well, just like the first question, we identify how much one apple costs for each shop, then compare to see where is the cheaper deal. Three apples costs 99 pence from shop A, so one apple must cost 99 pence divided by three, which equals to 33 pence. Five apples costs one pound 60 from shop B, so one apple must cost one pound 60 divided by five, which equals to 32 pence. Looking at the cost of one apple, we can see that the apples in shop B have a better value for money as each apple is cheaper. Paul's never got these questions. Okay, the last type of question I'll show in this video is the rate something can be completed. For example, Jack eats eight fruit over five days. How many fruit will he eat in 12 days? How many days would it take Jack to eat three fruit? For the first part of the question, we would need to find out how much fruit Jack eats in one day. We divide the days and fruits by five. Jack eats fruit at a rate of 1.6 fruit per day. Therefore, for 12 days, we multiply 1.6 by 12, which equals to 19.2 fruit. Jack eats just over 19 fruits in 12 days. Slightly different for the second part of the question, as we are not looking for the number of fruit, but the number of days. Therefore, we find how long it takes to eat one fruit. This is calculated by dividing both sides by eight. It takes Jack 0.625 days to eat one fruit. So to find out how many days it takes to eat three fruit, we multiply 0.625 by three, which equals to 1.875 days, which is just under two days. Once again, pause and have a go at these questions. To summarize, when given proportion questions, use the unitary method to help find the worth of a unit. Use this relationship to help solve many different types of problems. And that's it. Well done for making it this far. This is just the first video. Um, have a go at these more challenging questions. If you like this series, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe to be kept updated on new in-depth videos. And most importantly, share. I mean, what's the point of knowledge if you can't share it, right? And if we can make some people not give up on maths because of these videos, then our job is done. Don't see a topic you need help with? Please suggest topics in the comments down below. We do read all the comments. Thanks again for watching and for learning. Peace.